This week on Supercars Talk, we've got driver announcements, calendar changes already, and a lovely new set. Welcome back for season 2021. Uh, let's hope this year's better than last. Uh, we've got off to a bit of an interesting start. Let's not get into that though. Uh, but look, at I've added some pictures. Um, these come courtesy of the 2020 Supercars calendar. Uh, so the pictures are very out of date. Uh, if any of you were lucky enough like me to get the 2021 calendar as a Christmas present, you'll notice that most of the pictures are actually from the 2019 season. Uh, but anyway, uh, so what I tried to do was add in a little bit of variety because unfortunately I sit here and this falcon was covered up. So I have had many comments about, and that picture probably doesn't help, uh, about the Holden bias. Uh, so with me here, hopefully you can see the uh, Nissan Altima there. Uh, of Simona, and we've got uh, Cam Waters Mustang. Uh, I have added in uh, the Dave Reynolds Commodore there. there. There is a Falcon in the background. Uh, and up here we've got a Falcon. We've got everyone's favourite, Nick Percat, uh, and the Red 23, and uh, the James Courtney's uh, Boost Walkinshaw Commodore there. Uh, so that's the big updates to the... Uh, what are you, the set that we've had over Christmas. Uh, I would also, a big shout out to uh, a good friend of the show, uh, Mr. Bouvan, uh, who has donated uh, and also installed some of his old computer parts into my greatly aging computer, uh, which we will actually find out today whether that helps a bit with the editing process. Uh, but there was definitely some giggles when the computer was opened up and how bad the video card was. Uh, so we've kind of moved on from uh, yeah, uh, what, what was probably a sad video card seven years ago when I bought the computer. We kind of moved it into about 2016 or something now uh, and quite a good video card and doubled the RAM and apparently it's faster RAM and there's a bigger power supply. Apparently I did pick a good processor at the time though so uh, we didn't need to upgrade that and um, yeah so hopefully that does help a bit of editing uh, as we go along make this a little bit easier for me. Now, on to the actual supercar news that we've had over Christmas. Uh, probably Lee Holdsworth was shocked to have been uh, essentially given the arse at Tickford. Um, not sure how shocked he should have been about this sudden announcement. Uh, some of us have known for a long time, and uh, if... Tickford were lucky enough to get a fourth license for this year. It was never going to be Holdsworth driving. Uh, it was going to be Thomas Randall. Now, I... Okay, one 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 step to the side. First, uh, Lee that comes out and, you know, the day of the announcement. Oh, I'm shocked about this sudden announcement. Oh, you know, I thought I had a drive. I had a contract. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then all of a sudden we've announced a TCR deal. So... <laughs> Yeah, he's really, uh, were you that shocked if you've already signed a TC? Oh, no, I'm sure that, you know, it's with Ash Seawood Motorsports, which as far as I know from the whole TCR thing is Gary Rogers Motorsport in disguise. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's just a name for another GRM car. So we might get into that another day about how basically most of the field is now GRM and they own most of the thing. Um, that's probably TCR talk for another day. If we really want to get into too much TCR talk around here, other than, yeah, there are either a few up and coming guys or, you know, basically supercars rejects in there. Um, so he's going to be driving an Alfa Romeo with, uh, Ash Seawood Motorsports. Um, okay. Now, there's a lot of people saying, I've noticed comments about, oh, Cam Waters should have got the chop over Lee Holdsworth. What planet are you guys living on? Um, 
Cam Waters came second in the championship last year. That's I think that's actually the best that a guy in the whole Tickford, Pro Drive, whatever you want to call it. I think other than Frosty's championship win, that's possibly the best championship position ever for that team. And if not, maybe Winterbottom came second one year. Uh, but the, why would you... Holdsworth came 11th in the championship. And to all the people that saying, oh, you know, it took him a while to get used to the team and everything, he came 9th the year before. So he actually did better overall the previous year. He, to an extent, he regressed last year championship-wise, uh, while Cam is going from leaps and bounds. Uh, I think... I, I'll put my hand up. I... I didn't think Cam was going to be the leader there. I, you know, at, at the start of the year, I mean, Will, I, Will Davison probably would have come second in the championship if, had he been there all year. Uh, but, geez, did Cam step up. He did a brilliant job last year. So, anyway, that's... Cam definitely should not have been the one to get the arse. And to, oh, then Courtney and the boost money. Well, that's why Courtney's there, because he's got the boost money. And Jack LeBrock's there because of the truck assist money. So uh, it's pretty simple. And realistically, if we go over a whole season, Courtney's going to do a better job, I think, than Lee Holdsworth. Um, Jack LeBrock will run out the contract uh, until Thomas Randall gets a seat or they get a fourth license. So that's what's happening there. Um and also to those saying as well, well, why would you have signed Lee to a long-term, con long-term, a two-year contract, you know, if you didn't have a seat for him? Well, at the time when they signed that deal, they would have thought that the Red 23 thing was continuing and there would have been no consideration that the whole James Courtney boost money thing would have been coming along. So... To me, it didn't make sense when they signed him to a two-year deal. Uh, he, he wasn't in a position to negotiate longer-term deals. Um, yeah, I would have only ever signed him to a one-year deal anyway. But that's what they did. And yeah, uh, if you disagree with anything I've said uh, down in the comments, but really, Lee's a really nice guy. But yeah, look at the rest of the field. Who would you remove for Lee Holdsworth, really? And, oh, okay, McCall Jones might not get the same results, but his dad runs the team. Um, Jack Smith, he brings a lot of money. And, you know, would Lee want to be in a fourth-string Brad Jones racing car again? Um, yeah, the, realistically, those two cars at Brad Jones Racing, they're only there because of the money that they bring. If the money wasn't there, those cars would not be in the field. Um, yeah, so it, he's got his TCR deal now, so it's it's all academic. Uh, but yeah, he so he's not going to end up in the second techno seat anyway, which is probably we're just waiting for Chris Pither to be announced because uh, he's probably got the biggest checkbook for that seat. Now, on the whole Tickford thing, I did kind of mention it before. Thomas Randall has been signed on a multi-year deal. Uh, how it, and whatever that means now, because Lee Holdsworth had a multi-year deal. Anyway, uh, he was going to be the fourth car at Tickford, but they couldn't get a contract to race, which is very short-sighted from whoever decided that it wasn't going to happen. Um, I, I still don't understand. Apparently, they said can we just do it as like a wild card for the whole year and we won't take any income away? Um, the only thing I can think of is that 24 cars is a lot neater packaging into the pits than 25 and it just makes things like the totem down the side of the screen and all of that kind of stuff makes it a bit easier when there's an even number. Um, other than that, I cannot understand it. And realistically, Jack LeBrock's just going to be uh, looking over his shoulder all year because Thomas Randall will be there full time. And if they don't get a fourth license for next year, well, Jack LeBrock will be the one to get the arse. It has finally been confirmed that Penrite is out at Erebus. Erebus is hinting that they have a new sponsor as well. 
Um, possibly one coming from a team at Camelfield that not being sponsored by them anymore. Uh, everyone expected this sponsor to end up at Triple Eight and on Chas Mostert's car as well. I did hear a rumour that they could be going to Erebus though. Whether this is true or not, because yeah, I would have thought that the deals were already signed at Triple Eight and Walkinshaw, from what I was told, uh, whether they also jump on board at Erebus in a minor sponsorship deal like what is said to have been happening at Triple Eight and Walkinshaw with this money. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, Erebus have been active on social media though, uh, hinting at a new sponsor announcement very soon. Um, and it's only a matter of time before Penn Wright and Dave Reynolds get confirmed in the empty Kelly racing seat. The Australian Grand Prix is off. Uh, officially at the moment, I think we're at, it's possibly being postponed. Um, when you look at the Formula 1 calendar and everything, I can't see how they're going to fit it in later on in the year. The problem with it is that with uh, everything going on at the moment, we're going to have 14-day quarantines for international travellers from Melbourne, which means that they would have to bring their testing forward a week. Uh, because the testing would conflict with the quarantine period and then all the teams have to have everyone sat around in Melbourne for two weeks doing a quarantine and they're not having to do it anywhere else and apparently we're not going to be flexible with doing like a bubble and all that kind of stuff which they have done successfully in other countries so the Grand Prix is off the V8s will be racing at Sandown on that same weekend um, Unfortunately, it won't be a 500. Uh, it might be, you know, a 250k race each day. Probably not, though. Uh, it'll probably just revert to a sprint, uh, possibly even the same setup as what was going to be at the Grand Prix because of the tyre allocations. So that wraps up episode one for 2021. Uh, exciting year ahead. As I have mentioned before, I've got some plans to do some specials. I have been lazy over the Christmas period and haven't uh, done any research or anything on them. I, they're just ideas in my head at the moment. Uh, I do plan on dedicating a little bit of extra time to this channel though uh, during this year because hopefully my work commitments uh, back off a little bit again. Uh, it was very hectic in the second half of the year so yeah, uh, and I was also learning a new job. Uh, in other news as well, uh, some of you may have known, I did actually, just prior to Christmas, I waved goodbye to my V8 supercar. Uh, my trusty VF Commodore uh, was sold and I have replaced it with a sexy new little German. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, it was definitely sad to see the V8 go, and I do miss the sound, um, but, the, you know, time is up, and unfortunately, yeah, I, it was time to say goodbye. Uh, if any of you have some suggestions of what you would like to see, or if you have any questions, uh, down in the comments, um, email me, supercarstalk at gmail.com. Uh, but for now, the plan is, uh, you know, an episode once a week, probably back to a standard kind of Tuesday evening thing. Um, yeah, unless we get put into lockdown again and yeah, things can vary up a bit. But until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.